Hello and welcome to this edition of the American Health Journal. I'm Roger Cooper. Today we have a series of reports that offer insights into various specialties of medicine. First up, we'll have a segment on diabetes, which has certainly become epidemic in this country. Later, vital information all men should be aware of when it comes to their prostate. We go now to Laura Windsor, who has a report on HPV. Roger, HPV is a very common virus. An estimated 20 million people in the U.S. have it. At least half of all sexual active men and women will eventually develop this virus. Dr. Stephanie Cropper of Pomona Valley Hospital Medical Center explains the virus and the recommended screenings necessary to diagnose this condition. HPV is a sexually transmitted virus called human papillomavirus. There are low-risk strains and high-risk strains. Low-risk strains are not as concerning because they cause genital warts, but nothing life-threatening. The high-risk strains are what we are more concerned with because those can increase your risk, or a woman's risk, of cervical cancer. There are no symptoms of HPV, so you wouldn't know you had it unless you were tested for it. Dr. Cropper goes on to say that younger women have stronger immunity to this virus. It's typically a transient infection and doesn't actually lead to high-grade lesions because the immune system in a young girl is so much stronger. We have found that women under the age of 21 are extremely low risk for developing cervical cancer, even though they are high risk for carrying the HPV virus. So the new recommendations are not to begin screening pap smears until age 21. And because there is such a high prevalence of HPV in girls under age 30, we only do pap smears every other year in age 21 to 29 because again the incidence of um, HPV is high but the chance of a woman that young developing high-grade lesions or cervical cancer is extremely low. At age 30 then we begin to test for HPV because the virus is less prevalent and that can help gear women who are at risk for developing high-grade lesions on their cervix, precancerous lesions, or cervical cancer. And if the woman is HPV negative with her pap smear, she is very low risk, so we could extend the pap smears to every third to fifth year. Uh, whereas if she's HPV positive, uh, she could be flagged as a higher risk woman when we can screen her more frequently. You can actually do more harm than good by doing pap smears in women under the age of 21 or testing for HPV in women under the age of 30 because so many of them will be positive for HPV. Then we refer her for colposcopy. If that's abnormal, we might refer her for a, a, a LEAP procedure or a cold knife comb where we remove portions of the cervix. And what they've found in studies is that those procedures can cause harm in the future as far as small birth weight children, uh, preterm labor, premature rupture of membranes, you know, pregnancy complications. How successful are the treatments and are the incidence of cervical cancer decreasing? The incidence of cervical cancer has declined dramatically since the introduction of the pap smear in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, the, mo the majority of women who are diagnosed with a squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix at a, a later stage are women that have not been meeting these pap smear requirements. But in low-risk women that are having their pap smears done as recommended, the, the incidence of cervical cancer is extremely low because we're catching dysplasia, the low-grade lesions, um, at, a, at a very early stage where it's treatable. Some HPV viruses can significantly increase the risk of cervical cancer in some women, so getting a regular pap smear can prove life-saving. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.